On February the 23rd, 1868, in La Houko, China, a Belgian missionary named Théophile Verbiest died. In August of 1865, together with four companions, he had begun his missionary experience in China. But let's step back. How did this adventure begin? here, in the suburbs of Brussels, when Théophile Verbiest, a young diocesan priest, had the idea of starting a missionary experience that would be the Belgian mission in China, of China, for China, as he wrote. He had been nurturing this missionary vocation for some time, especially after having become director of the Holy Childhood Association in Belgium. This association concerned itself with helping abandoned children in many parts of the world, including China. Verbiest discovered that this was the framework in which he wanted to live his religious vocation to the fullest. This dream was known to some young priests in the Belgian capital, who were also attracted by the idea of committing themselves to being missionaries in the Far East. The congregation is dedicated to the Immaculate Heart of Mary, and the Institute's spirituality is essentially focused on Mary. Mary is the first and clearest example of giving one's life to spread Christ's name. Her complete faith in the Word of God makes her the missionary ideal. As Father Verbiest often wrote, she is the one true moving force behind their work. The general purpose of the congregation is the conversion of the infidels and the specific purpose is the preaching of the faith to the Chinese and the salvation of the many abandoned infants. At the same time, the Articles of Association were written and were approved in November 1862 by Cardinal Sterx. The Congregation of the Immaculate Heart of Mary was founded with Verbiest as its first superior. Within two years, the first four members became twelve, and finally, in August 1865, the first group set off. It comprised four priests and one lay brother, Théophile Verbiest, Alois van Segfeldt, Franz Franks, Ferdinand Amer, and Paul Splingard. Destination, Inner Mongolia. They were to replace the Lazarist priests in the immense territory north of Beijing. Staying behind in skirt were two important members of the team that had established the congregation. Jack Bax, director of the novitiate, assisted in his organizational and ceremonial duties by Remy Verlinden. After two months of travel by sea, the Beast's group entered Beijing on November 25, 1865. Four days later, the missionaries left the capital, going beyond the Great Wall to the north, and after crossing mountain passes, they caught sight of the village of Chavance. They had arrived. The first skirtist mission could set down routes. A year later, a second group joined them, their evangelization work could blossom, helped along by some Chinese collaborators. In 1866, they expanded the territory they were working in. Amma was assigned to the Eshwe district and Van Sagveld to Ximio Ergo. Along with Verbiest, Vranks remained at Chivance to serve as director of the local seminary. In the years that followed, the congregation spread to other districts.
Initially, the missionaries directed their attention to the local Christians, but with the arrival of new forces, they could begin to concentrate on evangelizing the non-believers and taking care of the orphans there. Eventually, some 400 children were housed in five buildings. These were very difficult years, marked by drought, shortages, lack of resources, a hostile climate, language difficulties and diseases that took many lives, including that of Alois van Segfeldt. Ultimately, even the founder succumbed, taken by typhoid fever while on a pastoral visit. His body was interned inside the little church at Laugu. In 1930, his mortal remains were moved to Belgium, where today they lie in the chapel of the Mother House in Skirt. The Beast was a man of deep faith, generous and open. He was able to mould the first missionaries by his example. He shared their problems and their joys, loved and was loved for his boundless apostolic zeal and contributed to make of the congregation a cor unum et anima una, which means one heart and one soul. He received the light of God's Spirit, readily making himself available like Mary. Still today, the charisma he received burns and glows in all those who have embraced his missionary ideal. The expansion of the skirt missionary presence beyond China. It was 1888. A new continent was opening up to evangelization. Africa. 200 young missionaries in their 20s and 30s died because of wars, sickness and the harshness of the conditions. To become a missionary meant to risk an early death. Yet, despite this risk and this enormous loss of life, candidates willing to give their lives for the spreading of the gospel continued to present themselves and the congregation continued to grow. Meanwhile, other challenges had presented themselves to the young missionary congregation, which would make it even more open and international. The undertakings in the Philippines and Indonesia. The skirt missionaries immediately expanded their work to other Asian countries, Taiwan, Hong Kong and Japan. On January the 12th, 1944, in the midst of World War II, Ernest Dieltens landed on Miami's airport. After an adventurous trip from Tianjin, China, he arrived in the United States to request help for the CICM missionaries interned by the Japanese. But this is just the start of a story that, in a few years, would see the rise of the first mission in the Americas. A property was purchased in Arlington, Virginia, and its name changed from Lionhurst to Missionhurst, thus giving the skirtists in the United States the new name of Missionhurst Missionaries. The missionaries went first to Pennsylvania and Ohio, then to the south, to Texas, Louisiana and Oklahoma. This was the start of their work with the Mexican communities in Texas and with the American Indians in Oklahoma. Special attention was paid to community organization and to helping marginalized people obtain their social and civic rights. It was during this period that the congregation became truly and visibly international. It was not just the European missionaries expelled from China who came to the new continent, but also the new Congolese members of the congregation. Later, Filipino and Indonesian members would come as well. Between the 1950s and the 1970s, CICM missions were started in other strife-torn countries in Latin America, in Guatemala, the Dominican Republic, Brazil and Mexico. At the entrance to the museum at Skirt, Brussels, there is a gallery of nearly 3,500 photos of everyone who was ever a part of the congregation, from the founder to the present day. 
Donc le fondateur, à partir de, en 1862, à partir de ce moment-là, jusqu'à nos jours. Since 1862, when Father Théophile Verbiest founded the Congregation of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, more than 3,000 priests and brothers have accepted the challenge and the adventure of leaving their home to bring the good news to peoples everywhere.